Uh, I would like to share with you the results of the work that we're doing at the Spanish National Research Council at the Institute of uh, Geography, Demography, and Economy. Um, um, this is the joint work with uh, two other um, uh, council uh, members, uh, Aurelio Tobias and Diego Ramiro, who is also present in the, in the audience. And uh, this work that I will be uh, presenting now, it, it, it's focusing on the uh, temporal evolution of the optimal temperatures in uh, Spain, and this is a nationwide analysis, and uh, Diego then will focus on a more specific uh, study case, uh, focusing on the case of the city of uh, Madrid. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like um, to provide you with um, a really quick background. Uh, so, in the past 40 years, Spain has seen a significant increase in the uh, mean temperatures up to uh, one uh, degree, uh, degree Celsius, which is actually a lot. And uh, apart from this general rise of the temperatures, uh, on this uh, map, uh, on the animated map, you can see the accumulated number of um, extreme uh, heat episodes uh, by year, uh, and we see that uh, it also increases in time. Uh, and in terms of the future predictions, well, most of the uh, climatic forecasts uh, are saying that uh, the heat waves in Spain will increase in its uh, frequency and intensity, uh, but there are also some points of view, some predictions that are saying that uh, the, uh, this um, increase in the heat uh, wave incidence won't be um, homogeneous in space, meaning that some places would see the increase and, and some places uh, not. Um, the analysis of the uh, air temperatures in Spain that we did for the past 40 years, it also shows, uh, apart from the, the general increase of the air temperatures, that the warm season is expanding in time. And apart from that, we see the polarization of the seasons, meaning that the summer is getting hot, uh, hotter and hotter, while um, the uh, winter season is seeing more uh, extreme cold episodes. And, well, for us as the uh, demographers uh, to study the exposure to, uh, to extreme heat is um, uh, somewhat uh, complicated because we know that um, uh, a really small number of deaths uh, is attributed to direct exposure to heat and most of the fatalities that we see that are related to the, the, to the exposure to extremely hot temperatures, um, they have to do with some sort of an underlying condition which might be um, individual uh, medical condition or uh, socioeconomic circumstances or living conditions. Uh, and in, in this work, we really wanted to focus on the analysis of the overall process of adaptation to, uh, to continuously growing temperatures in Spain um, over time. And to do that, we used uh, two different uh, sources uh, for the climatic data. Uh, we relied upon the um, um, continuous uh, uh, grids with um, uh, 10, um, mostly um, 10, uh, 10 per 10 kilometers uh, resolution, um, which is coming from the European Center for Medium uh, Range Weather Forecast and is covering this period from 1979 to 2018. And um, for the population data, we use the individual death uh, microdata. And in this case, we're working with all cause mortality. Uh, data, uh, and this data is coming from the uh, repositories of the National Institute of Statistics uh, of Spain. Uh, and uh, this data we were able to disaggregate by age and sex. Um, now, the minimum mortality concept. This metric uh, that uh, we will be using here in, in this study to, st to, to analyze this process of uh, adaptation. Uh, it is now a commonly used uh, metric, which is essentially um, a point uh, in the uh, exposure response mortality curve, below and above of which the risks of uh, exposure to either colder or hotter temperatures are higher. And the general idea here is that uh, if this minimum mortality or op 
optimum temperatures. If these temperatures increase in time, along with the uh, ambient temperatures that also increase in time, then uh, the population is somehow adapting to these uh, new uh, environmental conditions. In terms of the statistical analysis, um, we use now widely um, used uh, statistical approach, which is the distributed lag nonlinear modeling technique, which was uh, mentioned uh, in the posters that, uh, that we've seen in the previous session. Um, and this method uh, essentially allows us to uh, control for the long-term time trends, and also it um, con uh, considers the complex uh, lacked structure of this relationship between temperature and mortality. And uh, in this case, since we're working with the uh, entire uh, year, not only with the summer, we, ex we extended this uh, lack period to 21 days to account for the delayed effects um, in case of the uh, win uh, winter season. Um, a few words about the overall effects. So on this, um, slide, you can see in the central part the overall cumulative association and the temperature distribution. Uh, so this is, these are the overall estimates uh, for for the whole national territory for the uh, for uh, for past decades, uh, and this um, uh, point um, that uh, that you see. Uh, uh, which says the minimum mortality temperature equals to uh, 18 degrees. This is this optimum temperature with a range, uh, with this uncertainty range from 17 to 19 degrees, uh, and uh, and we see how the risks below and above this uh, uh, this range of temperature uh, increases. We did this analysis by sex and age, and on the upper part. On this slide, you can see uh, the results um, of um, uh, the, the results done for um, women and men and for different uh, age groups. Uh, and here, the most important thing is that the exposure to uh, extremely hot temperatures have the highest risks on the day of exposure and maybe up to five to seven days post exposure while the exposure to the colder temperature it actually has the lowest risk on the same day of exposure and it gradually increases starting from the ta uh, from the second day up until three weeks post exposure and these effects are the most pronounced in the uh, elderly and the groups in the group of elderly female uh, individuals we also calculated the um, attributable fractions of mortality, and here we see that um, in the table below that um, in, in case of the elderly male, uh, uh, the exposure to colder temperature results in the almost 8% uh, of attributable risk, while for the uh, women of the same age, uh, the risk of exposure to cold is not that significant, but for the heat, it is. Uh, and equals almost 4.2%. Uh, uh, and now coming to the um, uh, key point of, of this analysis, the evolution of the uh, of the minimum mortality temperatures uh, over time and the adaptation uh, through time. So um, here uh, we can see how uh, the density plot of the of the temperatures it uh, it is shifting to the uh, to the range of hotter temperatures, while the minimum mortality temperatures actually up until uh, the last decade uh, it goes down. And here, an important thing is that uh, really we can uh, not conclude. Mm, if there is uh, um, an adaptation, and only if we look at, uh, at a single estimate of the optimum temperatures. Uh, here, it is very important to consider uh, the joint indicators, minimum mortality temperature, the risks, and the attributable fractions, and these changes over time. Uh, and uh, here, uh, essentially, what, what we see that uh, even though the, uh, this estimate, the optimum temperature decreases, uh, the risks um, uh, related to the exposure to colder temperatures, uh, they, uh, they are decreasing uh, faster, which kind of uh, drags this temperature down. And then in the last decade, the risks related to the, uh, to the exposure to hotter temperatures 
uh, they, uh, they, they also decrease and then uh, it shifts this uh, temperature uh, to, the, um, to the hotter temperatures. Uh, and we also see here another important thing, which is an expansion of the uncertainty range. So we can now, uh, if uh, in the beginning of the observational window, we were talking only about the single uh, number, single temperature, uh, now we're talking about the range of the temperatures. We did the same uh, thing, the same analysis for the uh, large age groups and, uh, and by, by sex, and uh, here the pattern is, uh, is consistent. And, um, um, <coughs> Uh, and, and we kind of see the, the same thing, the, uh, the reduction of the risks related to the exposure to colder temperatures um, over time goes faster uh, and uh, it's more pronounced uh, for the elderly individuals. And now to conclude, uh, so um, um, here on, in this table we see these uh, three joint indicators. Uh, the uh, drop in the m minimum mortality temperature up until the uh, last decade of the observation, uh, and then a slight rise um, in, the, in the past 10 years, uh, and then significant reduction in the risks and attributable fractions related to the cold exposure, which was almost double uh, 40 years ago. And then in terms of the uh, exposure to heat, the, the risks and the fractions actually uh, uh, stay pretty much the same. Uh, and we see only a small reduction in the uh, in the last uh, decade. So, kind of the uh, the main conclusion here is that the adaptation to non-optimal temperatures uh, in Spain was um, uh, progressive and evident since uh, since the beginning of this observational window. And uh, for cold, it happened only since 2009. Uh, and it. Uh, it, it is consistent with uh, other studies that are focusing uh, on, on the same, uh, on the same uh, problem, but looking, um, looking at the mortality uh, by cause, by respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. Uh, and, um, and our study is, is consistent with, with their findings. So thank you very much for your attention.